okay, that. okay, so good afternoon. So this is actually the continuation of the previous talk um, about uh, maintaining accessibility on the long run uh, through testing. Um, so j just to make a quick point, do you, what do you think is the accessibility problem of this? What is the problem with GNU plots for? The colors. Red and green is the in the worst choice of colors to do because a lot of people actually can't distinguish and then um, like 8% of the people of the male people cannot distinguish between the two uh, or at least have problems and then with GNU plot 5 they improved this so you see I mean just wondering how many people here please raise your hand if you are colorblind in the room is there somebody no well that's 8% normally so statistically there should be 1% at least um, anyway so what is accessibility? Um, well, to make it simple, it's making something usable by everybody, whatever the specific needs, situation, etc. So of course it's blind people, deaf people, etc. But also people with cognition issues. Uh, I don't know, all people have problems with un uh, understanding your, your software, things like this. Um, motor issues, you cannot press a shortcut because you need your both hand, both your two hands and you don't, you have only one. And quite often it can be you because you have a package and you cannot type with the two hands or uh, a lot of people here have low vision and you're lucky because you have glasses which you can uh, wear all the, t uh, all the time. But some people cannot have this. Um, there's a poll which says actually 10% of the people are really ha handicapped in their daily life and 20% would say that they are limited in their daily life due to conditions, whatever. The thing is, it's, it, really, it really is a matter for everybody, actually. And for free software, this is really about freedom zero, the freedom to run the program for any purpose. Uh, okay, to run, but more to that, and to be able to use the program. And then there's the second uh, freedom, freedom number one. This is free software, you can modify it. That cannot happen. I will explain why. It's a question of priority, as was mentioned previously, it should be prioritized. It's actually just like security and internationalization. Uh, in the rest of the talk, really try at some points thinking, yes, this is like security and internationalization. It's the same kind of, we have to keep it in mind all the time. And the question is, who is doing this? The problem is, it concerns just some fraction of the people, they are, they are already having a hard time using computers and having the skills to actually program, modify the program, it's even less people. And then you have people who have programming skills and could do something on this, but then being aware and understanding what needs to be done, it's even less people. So there's really an extremely small fraction of the people who can actually work on this. So the sentence this is free software you can modify it that cannot work actually you could say okay let's pay some people to do this okay so we have some people which monitor all the software in the free software uh, world um, so we would need a lot of people keeping getting updated with all the evolutions we have here and there and so we have for instance uh, John Mary at Igalia who does this on everyday life but she cannot do everything it's not possible and spending your whole day just debugging things, it's really more than painful. So, no, it's, it's not viable uh, as, as a solution. So the support has to be um, uh, spread among every developers, integrating into their development process, just like security, just like internationalization. Nobody develops a software without taking security issues into account nowadays, or at least they shouldn't, really. Uh, Accessibility is the same kind of priority. Um, just to give the low things, so the um, UNO rights of persons with disabilities, so I put everything so you can read it offline, but basically discrimination is dis uh, exclusion on the basis of disability, including denial of reasonable accommodation. So even if you don't do this on purpose, it's considered exclusion. And reasonable, what does it mean? not imposing a disproportionate or undue burden. Okay, it's not much more clear, but at least it has a legal uh, meaning, uh, disproportionate. And the question is how to make it proportionate. 
Um, so we will propose a regression testing. Um, so there are two things. For a start, we want to avoid introducing new issues. So everything that is uh, developed nowadays should not have accessibility issues. By pointing them out as soon as the development, while the programmer is programming, the tools tells it, oh, this is bad, this is bad, this is bad. Here, here is how you should fix it. And then the programmer learns, and then he will not do the, the uh, mistakes again. So that's uh, an extremely important thing to not go back. Um, make sure that we don't have new issues. While we still have the old issues um, that we have to work on, so we have a list, and then, okay, we have to work, but it's a second priority after making sure new things don't uh, get regression. So what are we talking about technically? Um, just extremely briefly, the idea is we want to make the same software accessible um, for a lot of reasons. I don't detail, but basically uh, we can't re-implement LibreOffice, for instance, so we, so we have to make it accessible. Um, the idea is you have your application, and then the screen reader uses an accessibility, accessibility bus to access the abstract representation of the application. And this is basically a tree of widgets. And then, okay, you have all the information. Cool. A lot of toolkits provide this information. That's fine. But the problem is it doesn't mean that it's necessarily usable because maybe you have this dialog box and maybe you implemented it that way. So you have labels and then you have text and there's nothing that relates one with the other. So ideally you would say there's a label for some text, um, but maybe you have just written your code that way. Or maybe it's the XML file you use which imposes that way of doing it. Okay, we could say, oh, sorry about this. Um, you could say that the screen reader should have a script to fix and to know that it should relate one with the other, but it's not viable on the long term because the screen reader then gets a lot of ugly hacks and it's not maintainable. On the long term, with each new release, you have to fix to update the hacks. It's not uh, really something we want. Instead, uh, you should just declare properly the relationships between the widgets. Oh, sorry. Um, to declare them properly means you say that this text is labeled by this label. So that's what we will focus on. Just some takeaway slides, I don't detail them because I don't have the time, but basically design logically without taking into account graphic things. Use standard widgets, uh, use labeled widgets, make sure you have re logical relationships and keep it simple. And s making it simple will help everybody actually <coughs> to use your software. You can try accessibility tools, you can enable, enable the screen reader and see what happens and try to use just a keyboard, don't cheat, and see what uh, shows up on the Braille device. If you want, there is a debugger to check exactly what is there. Okay, but maybe it's not something that we should promote because it shows that it's quite a lot of work to work on accessibility. Well, maybe we can do a lot of things without going that far. Um, so trying to use automatic tests in continuous integration and that's what we propose as a, fir as a first step uh, now uh, to try to avoid some classes of new issues and still have a fix me list to uh, fix the previous ones. The idea is that that way we can make people aware of the question with easy enough to fix issues uh, and then, okay, they take that into account and then maybe later on we can expand the kind of things we want people to keep uh, in mind all the time when they are developing. So about regressions, you know about re regression. So you move one step forward, but actually you go two, step forward, uh, two, two steps backward because a new feature breaks an old feature, a bug fix breaks a feature, you have regressions here and there, so you need regression testing and user testing. Concerning accessibility, it's way worse. Usually when you make one step forward, you actually have 10 steps backwards. And new features are just not usable at all, quite often. And bug fixes break usability completely, quite often. And user testing doesn't work because there's, there aren't so many uh, concerned users and it's difficult to, for them to test the development versions of, of, of your software. And the developers themselves don't have any idea on how to 
actually fix it because they, they are not accessibility experts. So how to test this? What, what should be done? So regression testing could be an idea to make them learn progressively. So new features, they should be hopefully usable. That is, there are shortcuts, there are logic relationships. Is that convenient? Maybe not, but at least the new feature with some effort should be accessible. I mean, the person who actually needs accessibility, maybe it's not convenient, but at least it can achieve the task with more time than should be ideally be needed, but at least uh, it, it does work. And, and for the old features, we should make sure that they remain usable. Really. So there are three things we are thinking about right now, which are relatively simple. So labels with widgets, all widgets should have some label which says what uh, it, it, it is about, uh, except maybe some special cases. Labels conversely, if they are there for the visual rendering, that's probably for a reason. And so if there's a label without a widget attached to it, probably there's something problem um, like somewhere. And also shortcuts, all the widgets should be reachable through shortcuts. So maybe pressing tab or maybe it's in the toolbar and so you have an F something shortcut to be able to access it quickly. Um, so maybe these are the really simple rules that could be tested automatically that we can enforce and make sure that they will always work. And that's already a huge progress uh, compared to what we have uh, nowadays. So how to test this? Uh, we could try to test online, so run the application and check that we have labeling, uh, but it's quite expensive, it's slow, uh, and okay, but which source line uh, corresponds to that widget, it's difficult. Maybe we can do that inside the toolkit, but um, it's also the same problem, how do you get back to the source code? Okay, maybe there's research to be done here. Static analysis, uh, passing the source code, I don't really see how to do this at the moment. Uh, I mean, looks not so easy. But a lot of applications use Glade, so XML files basically. And so what we've been working on and, and will work uh, this month is a tool which shows the warning. So saying that this uh, widget doesn't have uh, a label for, um, uh, this label doesn't have a widget attached and this widget doesn't have a label. And they are actually uh, like uh, 16 lines apart. So probably actually these two needs to be related and that's all. So it's really simple to fix those and hopefully this tool will allow to make that uh, easy. So of course we have other issues like there are multiple mnemonic for one, um, for, for one widget or the link is actually broken. Okay, these kind of things we can uh, debug automatically. And we can include that in the build process. So we've been running this on LibreOffice and we got like 8,000 runnings. Um, that's a lot. Uh, we cannot start with compilation 8,000 warnings. So we want to implement a, a notion of suppression which says, okay, these 8,000 warnings, we have to fix them at some point, but day zero, we have zero warning and we remain at that. And if there are new warnings, okay, we fix them. And then when we have time, when, when we take the time to do, we fix those old right warnings we have suppressed and then uh, we should be able to make progress, actually. There are false positives. Uh, sometimes you say, no, no, this actually is not interesting to label or some things. Probably we can automate some of these and mark those which we cannot automate because it's really on the semantic. We will be working on that this month. So to have a look at all of these, try to sort them out, see with the people what they prefer, the way they prefer, etc. So that's the Hipra company and Martin Piochot who wrote um, the initial tool and which we will use and extend and that's funded by uh, TDF. So it's on uh, some JIT uh, for now. Um, probably we will try to move it to some place like maybe at GNOME or GitLab or I don't know. We can discuss uh, our ideas that it should be uh, as globally used as possible. It doesn't have to be only for LibreOffice. Maybe there are LibreOffice specific things. From what I've seen in the 8,000 warnings, I, I probably not so many LibreOffice specific things, I guess. So to conclude, it's really a problem for a lot of people. 
Um, and actually, as I said before, it actually helps everybody when you have shortcuts to do your daily work. You actually get uh, save a lot of time. So, and making the software simple, etc., it really helps for a lot of things. But we need to raise awareness of, on this. And regression testing maybe is a nice tool, starting with just a few warnings and see how well it is accepted, etc., and then get to integrate accessibility in the development process itself to enforce the things that, okay, we have agreed on enforcing, making sure that it's always like this, just like security and, and internationalization. I haven't talked about keyboard shortcuts, but yeah, we will we, also work on this, just not, not now. Thanks. So we stay here for the weekend. Um, maybe just one question. Mm. So questions? Yeah. Can the script be integrated into Blade? Into? Can be, uh, the script be run inside Blade? <laughs> so can the script be uh, integrated in, inside Blade? Yes. Um, so I, I asked on the Blade mailing list. They didn't answer. Um, I'm not sure. Glade doesn't seem so, develop so much, but they, yeah, that was our idea. They're saying that okay, there's that Glade tool, and okay, integrate. The thing is, a lot of people use UI file, uh, UI files, but without actually using the Glade library. So, I, I prefer that it's just one script that people use, just like, like Lint, like Valkyrie. Valkyrie is not inside the compiler. I don't know. But, I mean, we are open to whatever. Any more questions? Yeah? You said there was 8,000 warnings, right? 8,000 warnings? Yeah, 8,000. And I think we have about 1,000 UI files, so that's like 8 warnings per file. Yeah, usually, yes. So, for instance, I, I, I didn't show it, but the sort dialog box, there are 8 warnings, and yes, there are 8 issues. Quite often it's a small issue, that is, you have the word ascending and descending, and you have to know that it's the sort things. And it's just labeling ascending and descending with the sort word. It's small, but it helps a lot actually. And it's really easy to fix. <coughs> okay.